I'm a successful photographer. I work for the New York Times, I work for Guardian Weekend, and my, my images are collected by the National Portrait Gallery. But I'm a successful photographer with a largely failing business model. That business model used to rely on scarcity, and as soon as I was unable to control the supply of those images when they were distributed on the internet and downloaded for free, um, I had to rethink what my product was and I had to rethink what my, my value was. Learning from what I'd done commercially, I had to rethink my value and my product as a teacher as well. So at Coventry University, we were given the challenge of improving the experience for the students, improving the value of uh, their perceived value of, of, their, of their time at the university, also to improve their, their employment uh, prospects and also to raise the profile of, of the course. And we had to do this without a budget. And so in answer to these, these challenges, I set up an open program of classes which uh, which opened the class out to, the, to a global community of photographers and it enabled our students to engage with this community from a closely mentored and safe environment. So the open classes have been hugely successful in a variety of ways and lots of them unexpected as well. These, the students that are attending the classes are now part of a huge community and they are connected to this community as well so they can take advantage of it whenever they want. There's over 33,000 people have come to this second iteration of one of the classes and, for t and students that are, that are in that class have gone on to assist and work with some of their heroes. So there is one of last year's students went on to assist Annie Leibovitz in New York. One of, one of my students is, is assisting Nick Knight and Mario Testino as well right now. So these are people that these students uh, would see in books and magazines but wouldn't normally get access to. And these people are actually actively playing a role in their education. One of the things about the classes that was really successful is using existing architecture. So rather than trying to reinvent or remake Facebook or remake Twitter, as institutions will sort of very often want to, we set out to go where the fish were already swimming. So we use a whole range of social media environments, um, but the students already use them. And a lot of this means that I have to learn how to use those environments from the students. If they're storing images on Flickr, then we use Flickr. If they're making film, then we ask them to use it to store it on Vimeo or perhaps on YouTube or wherever they're already using it. We also use Twitter because it's a really good listening tool. So we use all of these different environments in order to tune the network so we get um, effectively a clear signal. One of the benefits of the open classes is that engagement can be asynchronous. There is a live classroom experience, which I would be a part of, and I would be sort of leading that experience. But also there is a community that's following along online live time, as it were. And there is also a community that follows along in different time zones. And at the end of the class, we can aggregate all the tweets and we can see everybody's notes, so everybody can benefit. But this also turns that note-taking experience into an online dialogue. Very often we find that the people that tune in to listen to Photographer X are an expert on Photographer X, and they have some really valuable comments. So our students really benefit from who was, to all intents and purposes, a stranger beforehand, coming in and, and supplying sort of more valuable content. And as I say, at the end of the lessons, we can then aggregate all that, and then the student who doesn't have English as a first language can take all this, the class's notes and she can, she can take them away and she can refer to those and study them again later. And the student who's dyslexic, who uh, can't make their own notes very well, can take these away and, and sort of unpick them at their leisure. So everybody, get, everybody wins. Everybody gets this sort of broader, um, broader pool to draw on. We continue to sort of learn openly. We found also that's a really important lesson to learn, is that when people feel that they're part of a work in progress, that they're more likely to actually offer support and less likely to try and tear down what it is you're building. When they feel as though they're building it too, then they're more likely to get involved. And this is also, this area of mediating ownership of, of a product is also quite a scary thing to do. It was very, very scary for me to do that as a photographer, and it's quite scary to do it as a, as a teacher as well. But there is a huge upside to this in that your customers become your salespeople. They actually own a part of it. They want it to succeed. When I arrived, I thought we sold just one product, a three-year degree that people had to come to Coventry, they had to physically attend the classes in order to get a degree at the end of it. By opening the classes out, finding that different audiences tune in for different periods of time, for different lessons, some just want to come for a lesson, some want to come and have a tutorial, some want to come for an entire class, and some want to come for the entire degree program. Suddenly there are a raft of different products that different people are valuing. The challenge is how to how to package each of those different products and reach the people that value them most.
I was terrified when I opened up the classes. I was a new to lecturing. I'd never taught before. The subject of, cl of the class, what it means to be a 21st century photographer, well, the book hasn't been written on that yet. By opening up to the community, I was able to draw on their help. The people that I was reading, the people that were inspiring me to open up, actually came along to the class and helped me, offered solutions, offered things to try. So one piece of advice to me doing this again would be be confident opening up. That in fact I stand to gain a great deal more than I stand to lose by opening up. And in fact by opening up I found I had a raft of different products and a raft of different values and by being open people could actually find me. It's very difficult to go into a library and ask for a book that you've never heard of. By making my product open so that people could could find it, I was able to reach the people that actually valued it as well. It's not enough just to, to open the doors and invite people to look in. One has to encourage them and enable them to take stuff away.